life. We lost an hour, but we gained our future. He could not have parted us into our future an hour. So he's going to show you some things today. He has catapulted us. We're now in the future. Hallelujah. So we're going to receive everything that God has for us on today. Be an expectation on today. We want to welcome you to morning manna. Welcome, welcome, welcome Facebook. Please remember to like and share this broadcast. We have our very own prophet Teresa coming to give the word of And I said, we don't, 
we don't have any um, snacks in the house. She said, yes, we do. I'm finna, this, this, is, this is all prophetic. She said, yes, we do. And she reached up on top of the refrigerator, and there's a whole bunch of snacks there. But he said, because you couldn't see it, don't mean it wasn't there. He said, and tell you, that's why a lot of you have not gotten what I'm at, what I want to give you, because it's higher than what you've been going. And so he said, today you gotta come in hunger. And you gotta come in thirst. And you gotta come after me today. And if you just look a little higher, everything I said was there is there, but there's even more there. But I need your more in this season so I can pour out my more on you. And he said, tell you. He said, tell new beginnings. He yeah. said, I'm about to prove to y'all today how I am that I am. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, new beginnings. Good morning, Facebook. And lastly, good morning, Jesus. Okay, so I'm Minister Cole, and my assignment is the vision statement. So the vision statement for all the new people on Facebook. It's an every Sunday thing. I want everybody to say it. Yes. If you yes. don't know the vision statement, we have all the monitors, trifles behind your seat, and mostly your name is not. Yes, it is. On the count of three, we will say it in unity, power, and authority. Yes. On the count of three. One, two, three. We are New Beginnings Ministries. Our vision is based upon the scriptorial theme taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Which according to the Amplified Version states that, Therefore, if any person be engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Our vision is translated here upon the earth through a dynamic, multicultural, non-denominational ministry emphasizing faith, family, and fellowship. We are a word reading, a word believing, and a word doing kind of people, all for God's glory. We will walk in the fruit of the Spirit, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and daily put on the whole armor of God, believing in the five-fold ministry offices, and taking part in the evidence of His glory with signs, wonders, and miracles following. We long to see lives transformed by introducing a real God to real people with real issues. And this is the account of Peter when um, Peter was jailed, right? So verse 1 says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands, the vex, the certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, and with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to further to take Peter also. Now, when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quartarians of soldiers. So a quartarian of soldiers, a quartarian is four soldiers. So they put Peter in with 16. He was being um, guarded by 16 soldiers. One man, one man, 16 soldiers. And um, intended after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And Peter was in pre prison and they prayed for him. And this is the part that got me. Now, Peter, that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. How many of you know you can sleep soundly even if you in something? <laughs> Knowing that God got you. Can you imagine sleeping soundly? He was sleeping so soundly 
that the angel had to smote him. You know what a smote is, right? Yeah. He had to hit him. He didn't just tap him. He didn't whisper in his ear. He smote him. That's how soundly he was sleeping. And when he got up, the angel said, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And he did. Now I want to jump down to this. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true what was done by the angel, but thought it was a vision. Wow. God is doing something in your life. And even though you're surrounded by soldiers, situations, haters, <laughs> and even if it looks like you got that, guess what? It's going to seem to you like a vision. Wow. Like you ain't even going to believe that God is doing it. So when, um, when we yeah. had that scripture from Habakkuk 1 and 5, yeah. he said, it's going to be so crazy, even you ain't going to believe it. Yeah. So I decree and declare over New Beginning Ministries and everybody connected to Habakkuk 1 and 5. That he about to do something so crazy, even you ain't gonna believe it. Amen. So Father, we thank you on this morning, Lord. We thank you for showing up and showing out in our lives today. We are in expectation, Lord, for what you are gonna do in this service. So Lord, let your glory fill the temple. And today, Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that the woman of God, we put on every gift that she has, Lord. We put on the teacher, hallelujah.
still want me. But yet you still want me.
That makes us kind of special. That makes us kind of settle. 
apart, right? And then he said that we are created in his likeness and in his image. So that should be saying something about us. So if he spoke everything else into existence and he created us out of the dust of the earth and breathe life into us, we are like him so we get to do what? Speak things into existence. That's what we do. Because we are created in his likeness and in his image. Okay, while y'all still resting on y'all feet, um, let's, let's, let's just read it all together, all 12 verses. Ready? Read. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in the words, he is a perfect man, able to also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and when we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great the And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is set upon our members, that it devours the whole body, and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and most great things. See how great a world Wait a minute, somehow we starting all over. We're supposed to be on seven. Verse number seven. Every kind of beast and birds, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God. what 
a snake does, it emanates poison. So with the tongue being an unruly thing, it can emanate poison. And then all, all, all the way down in the scripture talked about bitter and sweet cannot come out of the, you got to choose what you're going to speak about. You can't be wishy-washy because if I say I love you and I say I hate you, it we end up here. I don't love you. I don't hate you. I'm right here in a neutral position. So I have to be able to Speak what it is that I feel, speak what it is that I think, speak what it is that I yes. want to see yes. the results of. Amen? Yes. I thought about um, when, verse number five, it says, the tongue is also a small part of the body, but can speak big things. See how a very small fire can be set many, many trees on fire. Amen? So when we're talking about the tongue in this verse, verse 1 and 2 talks about a greater influence translates a greater responsibility. So that's talking about if you are a teacher of the word, you have a greater responsibility to the body of Christ because you are teaching them the word of God. And if you are making a mistake or you're making an error in your teaching, you are held accountable for that. So take this whole Holy altar yeah. serious. Yeah. Don't just come up here with anything yeah. because you will be held accountable for that. Amen? Yeah. Verse number three, it talks about the horse's mouth. Have y'all ever seen a horse? And if you ever written how you just kind of pull the this way and the horse go that way. If you kind of pull it that way, the horse go that way. So that little bitty thing in the horse's mouth guides the whole horse. It also talks about a ship. So in a ship, it's a little bitty rudder, and then the rudder is at the back of the ship. And even though you're in this big old ocean, if you pull the rudder, then eventually the ship, no matter how big the ship is, that's going to take a minute to turn, right? It's going to take a minute to turn. It's going to take a minute for you to see the results of the things that are coming out of your mouth, but eventually you will see the results. So it take a minute for the ship to turn, but eventually it turns. So if the ship is guided by the rudder and the horse is guided, guided by the bit, we are guided by the words that come out of our mind. So you wonder why you're seeing certain results is because you're saying certain things and you're seeing exactly what you're saying. So we need to be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouth. It says uncontrolled tongue can defile the whole body. Wow. So I am speaking all of this negativity and I keep wondering why am I seeing these negative results? Because I'm constantly speaking it out of my mouth. You have the power to change your atmosphere with your presence and your words. Yes. You have the power to change your atmosphere with your presence yeah. and your words. So if my speech is motivated by bitterness, envy, selfish ambitions, earthly desires, uh -oh. and unspiritual thoughts and uh -oh. ideas of evil, that means that I'm guided by Satan's rule. I'm speaking it into existence, and I wonder why is these things happening? I told y'all last time, words are like containers. Yeah. So this is a container, and I send that container out to get whatever I speak. So if I'm speaking death and destruction, this container is going yeah. to get death and destruction and bring it back into my life. If I'm speaking life, blessings, and peace and joy, this container is going to go out and get that and bring it back into my life. So it doesn't matter what the actual reality of your circumstances ooh, ooh, is speak ooh, what you want yeah, yeah, yeah. the bible says speak those things that be not as though they were speak those things that be not as though they were speak those things that be not as though they were so then i am prophesying to myself and if i continue to prophesy to myself i will get the reality of the words that are coming out of my mouth am i making sense you can have what you say and whatever you say you will have you can have what you say and whatever you say you will have so when we think about that if I'm speaking words of wisdom and I'm speaking mercy and love and peace and consideration for others and submission and sincerity and impartiality and righteousness I'm speaking the words of God I'm speaking the words of God so if the angels the Bible says I want to say it's in Psalms 103 and 20 the angels are hearkening for the word of the Lord 
Is that right? That word. The angels are hearkening waiting. for the words of the Lord, and they're waiting to do it. They're yeah. waiting to perform the words of the Lord. That's why we need to have the words of the Lord coming out of our mouth, yes. right? So if Satan is an imitation of everything that God is, is your, we agree. Good. Satan is an imitation. He doesn't have the power, but he's a duplicate. He is trying to imitate and emulate yeah. everything that God yeah. does, right? Yeah. So the angels are hearkening to the word of the Lord to go out and get what the word of the Lord is saying. We all agree upon that, correct? Yeah. Yeah. What y'all think the demons doing? Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for your daddy. The demons are waiting for all the negative yeah. work. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm so broke. I'm so poor. I'm so this. I, I can't do that. We was on a um, Bible study on Tuesday and Denise said something and I got a visual of it. I was like, oh my Lord. She was like, now what do we keep on saying? My feet is killing me. My feet is killing me. And your feet jump up with a machete and cut your throat. I was like, dang, Denise. Ah, what's she at? I was like, that was a visual. She like, your feet just jump up with a machete. I was like, wow. Wow! But those are negative words, right? So we just say little things and we don't even give it any thought, but it's those little things that we're saying that we're getting the results of and we're wondering why we are getting these negative results. And some people think it may be little and petty, but it's really a big deal. It really, I remember, I want to say maybe about three to five years ago, they used to always say, oh, they killing it. Oh, they killing it. They're killing it. They're, oh, she killed that. I would never say that because I don't want to be speaking death and destruction. It may sound petty, but I don't want to say nothing about killing nobody. So when somebody would say somebody was killing it, I would say it's giving me life. That, that hairstyle is giving me life. Your outfit is giving me life. I'm not going to say that you killed it. I'm going to flip it around and say that it's giving me life. So there's always an alternative that you can speak so you're not speaking death and destruction. And no matter how hip it is or no matter how slang it is, once those words come out of your mouth, they got to do something. Once the words come out of your mouth, they have to do something. So we need to be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouth. In James 1, 22 through 26, it says, But be doers of the word and not hearers of the word only. Deceiving yourself, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observed himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, it is not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, is the one who will receive blessed in what he does. And if anyone among you think that he is religious and not and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one is religion is useless. Wow. Yes. So if I say that I'm a Christian and I say that I'm a follower of Christ and then yeah. I, my actions is not reflecting that. That's what it says. You look in the mirror and forget who you was. You look in the mirror and forget everything that the um, Holy Spirit has taught you. You look in the mirror and forget everything that the Word of God says that you should, that you are, and that you will be, and what you have the power over. So you can have whatever you say, and whatever you say, you will have. Say that with me. You can have whatever you say, and whatever you say, you will have. One more time. You can have whatever you say, and whatever you say, you will have. So I told y'all last uh, week, don't be talking about the devil is busy. Say that. Because the more you talk about the devil is busy, actually what you're doing, you're worshiping the devil. Yeah. You're giving him his work. So the devil is under my feet. The devil can't be busy yeah. on my watch. I'm a, king. I'm a king's kid. I, I, I'm a king of the most high. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm God's creation here in the earth. So the devil can't be busy in my life. Amen. And if for some reason, if for some reason he is, God allow me. So you ju just like in Job, okay? When Job uh, says, I mean, J God said to say, what you doing? What you doing? Just busy. I mean, what you doing? He said, I'm going to see to and fro. I'm going to and fro to see who I can devour. So Satan didn't say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get Job. God said, 
Have you considered my servant Job? That means that God knew what was inside of, of Job. God knew that Job was going to hold on no matter what. God knew that he was going to be faithful, that he had a real relationship with him. Not a lip service relationship. Not a I call you when I need something relationship. A real relationship. I love you just like you love me. And whenever you need me, I'm going to be there for you. Amen? So God said, has you considered my servant Job? And he said, you can do anything. But you can't take his life. But you can't kill him. You can't kill him. And back to back to back, he just kept throwing stuff at Joe. Throwing stuff. Every time you turn around, it was another punch at Joe. Every time you turn around, he was sitting there. And he said, oh, the house burned up. And he was like, oh, Lord. Then he was sitting there and he said, all your kids, Dad. Oh, Lord, then all your cattle got burned up. And oh, Lord, all of this. And with so much stuff, his wife even said, why don't you just curse God and die? Just curse God and die. But Job knew that he hadn't done anything but been faithful to the Lord, right? He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. That was his thought at the time. It's not true because our God ain't an Indian giver, amen? He's not an Indian giver. That's just what Job was thinking at that time, okay? But he knew that God gave him everything and God could give it back to him if he wanted to. And he did just that. Job got double for his trouble. So he got double of everything that he went through. So just in case, it just might be Satan coming against you. Just understand that God is allowing it. And if God allow it, there's a reason for it. Something that you need to learn. Something that you need to get out of the process. So don't be complaining. Give God glory in the midst of everything. giving the devil no credit on our watch. Amen? And we're going to be mindful of our words. Me and Apostle was talking and we think we're going to call a word fast yeah. for the month of April. So y'all think about that. A word fast. No negative words can come out of your mouth. We need you to get an accountability partner to help keep you accountable of the things that are coming out of your mouth. No gossip. No backbiting. No, I don't know why they doing this. I don't know why. It ain't none of your business. It ain't for you to know why they doing anything. Amen? Somebody was telling me something. She was like, I don't know if I'm gossiping or not. What's your intent? So the intent of your heart makes it, I'm sharing some information or it makes it gossip. So the words can be the same, but it's the intent of the heart that makes it what it is. So if the intent of my heart is to get this out here and spread some stuff, then I'm gossiping. If the intent of my heart, I want to get some information so I can help this individual, then I'm just sharing the information so we can help this individual. So it's the all about your intention of your heart, what the words that are coming out of your mouth. Amen. So we don't want to talk about I'm broke. All right. We don't want to. We want to get that out of our mind. I'm so broke I can't even pay attention. Huh? What you say? What? Huh? I can't even focus, I'm so broke, right? We don't want to say that. We don't want to talk about I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of that. And as long as you keep on saying you're sick and tired, what you going to be? Sick and tired. Sick and tired. And Always. never, never, never speak negatively about yourself. Say that. Just right. don't do that. It, just, it makes me cringe when somebody says, I'm so stupid. I'm so dumb. That was so this. That was so that. I mean, we all, it's always a learning process. It's always a learning curve. So we don't never want to speak negatively about ourselves. So get that out of your vocabulary. Just stop it. So the Bible says in Luke, let's go to Luke 6, 43 and 45. It says, you shall know them by their what? You shall know them by their what? So if we're a child of God, the Bible says you should know us by our fruit. And what you can't do is fake fruit. <laughs> Go ahead. You can't run out here. You can't fake fruit. Wake up. You cannot fake fruit. <laughs> an apple tree cannot be a fake orange. Okay, it's going to produce apples. An orange tree cannot produce apples. It's going to produce oranges. So it can't make an orange turn red and be an apple. It's got to be an orange. So you know them 
by their fruits. You know them by their actions. You know them by the way they talk. You know yes. them by the way they walk. You know them by the way they respond. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. I'm a fruit inspector. What's going on up in this house? Yes. We're going to inspect this fruit. What's going on? What's going on? Let's inspect. I'm a fruit inspector. Let's inspect this fruit. And just know that your fruit needs to be inspected. Now, it's one thing to miss the mark. It's another thing to be producing a strange kind of fruit. I mean, we all miss the mark sometimes. I don't know about y'all, but I know I do, right? So we all miss the mark sometimes. But if, are you genuine in your fruit? Are you genuine in your love walk? Are you genuine in your relationship with Christ? Because if you're genuine in it, there's a certain fruit that should be produced out of that genuine relationship. It shouldn't just be the Sunday morning relationship. Yeah. And then Monday through Friday, you are healthy. But on Sunday, you say, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. your church After 3 o'clock, you back to about it, about it, right? After three o'clock, you, yo, 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 what you, so Wonder Woman turn around. I'm super saved. And after that, I'm back to being a hell. Yeah. So the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. And just know that everybody in your sphere of influence is a fruit inspector. They are inspecting your fruit to see what you're really about. Yes. They're ins inspecting your yes. fruit to see how you're responding. Yes. Yeah. So when something slick and slack come along, are you gonna jump on it? Or are you gonna say, no, I'm not gonna do that? Teach. So people know me, I, don't, I want everything I do, I want it legit, okay? Yeah. I want a warranty and a receipt. I want a warranty and a receipt. And a receipt. Yeah. I don't want no back slick, bootleg, Jack leg, nothing. I remember back when I had my house, I had this guy, he was doing some um, construction work on my house. And he was a guy that I went to church with. So then he kept putting it off, putting it off. And then he wasn't coming when he said he was gonna come. He didn't know who he was messing with. I called the Better Business Bureau. Called the Better Business Bureau, filed a report, filed a complaint. He was like, Teresa, I can't believe you called the Better Business Bureau. I gave you a discount on your services. I said, I didn't ask for a discount. You gave me a discount, and you also gave me discounted services. Yeah. So I didn't ask for a discount. I don't want discounted services. Yes, I called the Better Business Bureau, and if you're not here, I'm going to file a police report. You know, my kitchen was done in two weeks. <laughs> I want a warranty and a receipt, all right? I just don't want no back leg. I just don't want it. I, I don't want that. I want things to be done legit. I want things to be right. I want things to be done professional. I don't want no bootleg, jack leg, no, 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 no. I don't want Ray Ray off the block to do something for me. Now, if I want to give Ray Ray some money, you know, I just give Ray Ray some money. But if I want some work done, I want what? A warranty and a receipt, okay? A warranty and a receipt. Where am I at? Am I talking about the fruit? We did the fruit already. We did the fruit. A fruit did we read it? We, the scripture for fruit is Luke um, 43 through 45. For, it is, for a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Oh, that's good. Ooh. For every tree is known by its own fruit. Men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from bamberry bushes. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bring forth good. A evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bring forth evil. And the Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? It says, what a person so whatever is in your heart is going to be coming out your mouth. Whatever is in your heart. So it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is abundantly in your heart, that's just like people when they get drunk. When they get drunk, they're telling you the truth. They just didn't have a nerve 
to tell you when they were sold. Oh, that's when it all get out. You get the you get the tea on everything when somebody's wrong. Well, you know that ain't your daddy, right? You know so and so, so and so. They will tell it all when that they call alcohol spirits. <laughs> When that spirit get on them, it's like a truth serum, right? They gonna tell it all. Well, you know so-and-so, 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 and you be looking like, really? All kind of stuff that came out. I don't know about y'all family, but in our family, it did. My cousin here was like, really? That's not my daddy? They was like, who told you that? We was all looking like it. It was a tennis match. the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So whatever is the abundance of your heart. So we want to fill our heart with good things. We want to fill our heart with positive things. That's why it's so important for us to mind our gates. Mind what we watch, mind what we hear, mind what we say, mind what we experience. Those are our gates. So if we're allowing demonic, dark stuff to constantly come in, we're filled with that. And then what's gonna come out? Demonic, dark stuff. It's so funny, we went to go see Creed the other day. We sent in the movie, you know how the previews are? I had to close my eyes during the previews. It was just disturbing my spirit, all kind of stupid stuff was coming off. Greg was like, I don't even want to see this. <laughs> it's like, so you, when, you just, when your heart is sensitive to that, you just don't even want to see. I mean, it's a preview for a movie. That, I'm like, why is all these scary movie pre, the previews coming up, but we here watching Creed? So it's those little things. It's those little, it's the little cracks. Like they say, if you see one mouse in your house, you gotta have it. You got 20 mice in the house. Because if a mice can get in, he bringing his cousin, his sister, his mom, they all have a family reunion up there. You just have to see one. So that's just how demonic it is, right? So if you leave a little crack in the door and that something demonic can come in there, there's no, they all come in. They all coming in. So be careful of what you allow to entertain. Be careful of what you're watching. Be careful of what you're listening to. Be careful of it. I remember I was talking to a girl and she was talking about yoga and they was talking about Christian yoga. I said, there's no such thing. So yoga is really a worship to another God. So when they do yoga, the stretches are worship to another God. The, the breathing exercises in yoga is a worship to another God. So there's no way that this is created as a worship to another God. And I'm going to just twist it and make it Christian yoga. It's not Christian yoga. You're worshiping that other God. And then you wonder why these things are happening in your life. You wonder why you're having nightmares. You wonder why you can't sleep. You wonder why different things. Because you have opened up a door to darkness. You don't even know. You open up a door to darkness, so be mindful of the words that are coming out of your mouth and the activities of your limbs. Amen? God knew that because of sin, we would struggle with this issue. He knew it. It's so many scriptures about our mouth. We're going to go over a few of them and then I'm going to close, okay? So words are God's instrument of creation. What are words? Words are God's instrument of creation. Again, what are words? Words are God's instrument of creation. So God created the world with his words. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said that I am going to create, and he created by the words that came out of his mouth. And we are created in his likeness and his image, so the words that come out of our mouth also create our world. So we create our world with our words. I double dog dare you to start speaking positive. I double dog dare you to get something on your mind, something that's so astronomical, and just start speaking it out of your mouth. Just start speaking that thing out of your mouth. And then the more you speak it out of your mouth, you get to believe in it in your heart. And then once you speak it out of your mouth, believe it in your heart, the manifestation of it is looking for you. Because remember I said words are what? Containers. Words are containers. I mean, when you send those words out, that container is coming back to you. So think about something positive to say. 
I remember I was talking to a girl and she was saying how women don't like her and she don't get along with women and no matter where she go. That happens because that's what she's saying. That's what she's thinking. That's what she believing in her heart. I was like, girl, not me. I said, when I walk in the room with my man, I'm like, okay, she here. Everybody wants to know me. Everybody likes me. Everybody wants to say hi to me. Everybody wants to sit at my table and have a conversation with me. The party can start. I have arrived. So what are you telling yourself? Them no internal messages that you're telling yourself. I'm saying when I walk in, back in the day, the song, She's a Bad Mamma Jamma, used to just be ringing in my head, okay? That just ring in my head. That was my thing song. She's a bad mamma jamma. So what you telling yourself? It don't matter what you look like. It don't matter. It really don't matter. Have you ever seen somebody that is not that physically attractive? But they with somebody that's fine. You be like, how she get with him? Or how he get with her? It's all about the perception. It's all about how they feel about themselves. So everybody wants to be around somebody that's positive. Everybody wants to be around somebody that can speak life not only into themselves, but into somebody else. Who wants to be around somebody that's speaking death and destruction? Woe is me, I can't do nothing. I don't know nothing. I can't go nowhere. It can't happen. It's hard. It's tough. It's difficult. Who wants to be around somebody like that? So we have to be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouth. And we need to understand that words are God's instrument of creation. So if we are created in God's image, what is words? Our instrument of creation. That's good. Words is our instrument of creation. We create it with our words. It don't matter what your bank account look like. It don't matter what your pedigree says. It don't matter what your education is. We create it with the words that we speak out of our mouth. And as even if I don't believe it, at first I got to speak it. Once I keep speaking it, keep speaking it, if I hear it long enough, then I'm going to start believing it. Then if I speak it long enough, then I'm going to receive it in my heart as truth. Have y'all known somebody that lied so much they believe that lie? They done lied, they done told that lie so much they believe that lie. Apostle told me this story about he was lying about some money that was in a book. He was like, that money is in that book over there. And he said, he knew he was lying. There wasn't no money in the book. He said, he told that lie so much he needed some money. One day he started looking through the book. He just told the lie for so long that he believed the lie. So words are powerful. Words are very powerful. That's why there's so many verses about controlling our tongue in the Bible. It's a lot of verses. Let's see if we can get through five of them, um, Jordan. Let's see if we can get, th get through five. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30 and 19. So we're just going to go through a few scriptures about words. And I know that I broke down last time about the gifts and the gifts that say something. The gifts that say something are creation gifts. So the gifts that say something was the gift of prophecy, the diverse kind of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Those are gifts that say something. So a word of prophecy is a creation. It's a creative gift. So sometimes you can prophesy to yourself or sometimes somebody can prophesy to you. So I know a lot of times people have been taught a prophecy is a word of confirmation. That's not true. No. A prophecy does, a prophecy does not always have to be a word of confirmation. A prophecy can be a seed. It can be a seed that's set. If you receive it, then that's a seed, right? Because when um, Apostle Philly prophesied to me that I was going to be a pastor, that was nowhere on my radar. I wasn't thinking about being no pastor. I was cool with Greg being in ministry, but I wasn't going to be in ministry. So when she spoke those words to me, a seed was planted on the inside of me. And then when that seed got planted on the inside of me, my response was yes. And through my yes, God started cultivating our relationship even deeper. And then I walked into the words that she had spoke out of her mouth. So sometimes prophecy is a seed. So remember I told y'all there's three things that you can do with a prophecy. You can accept it. You can reject it, or you can put it on the shelf. Yeah. So when somebody gives you a word of God, you can accept it, That's good. you can reject it, 
or you can put it on the shelf. So when you put something on the shelf, that means I don't really understand it yet, and I ain't saying no to it, but I just don't understand it yet. And then I might have to come and take it off the shelf five years from now, three years from now, next month. But if I reject it, I know that that is not for me. Okay. One time we had some ladies and they came uh, to a women's conference, a and the lady was like, because I know you worry. And I was looking around like, who was she picking up? Because I ain't worried about Jack. Right. Who she talking to? <laughs> then after me and Greg was talking, he was like, she was off. She was real. I was like, okay, thank you, because I, I ain't worried about nothing. So I don't know who she was picking on, so I totally rejected that word, because okay. I felt like she wasn't talking to me, okay. right? So Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, y'all don't read that, read that, and I'm going to talk about it. Go ahead, ready, read. I call heaven and earth as witnesses that they against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and mercy. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So that's a, 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 a multiple choice question. I have set before you life and death. So from the words that are coming out of your mouth, you can get okay. life or you can get death. That's so the words that are coming out of your mouth, you can get yeah. life, you can get death. I'm telling you to choose life. So yeah. choose to speak yeah. the words of life. Don't speak the words of death because you can get whatever one you want. You can get life or death by the words that come out of your mouth. Choose life. It's your choice. It's your choice. One of the classic proofs of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistently the word of God. Amen. That's a proof of spiritual maturity. That's why it's so important for us to learn the word and pray the word because there is power in the word. So if we pray the word, then we can expect the results from the words that we are praying. Amen. Amen. The next one, the words that are programming your destiny. Words are programming your destiny. If y'all know anything about programming computers or programming something, you have to put certain things in it. They call it a code for it to do whatever it is that you want to do. So your words is your code. Your words is programming your destiny. So if you speak life, you'll get the results of yeah. the code that you're put in as far as programming your destiny. Amen? Yes. Ephesians 4 and 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. And then after that, John 6 and 63. Ephesians 4 and 29. It says, let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may be in part grace to the hearers. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth. Okay, that was a new key, James. This is a... Um, East, I mean, the English Standard Version. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such of good for building up mm. as it fits the occasion, wow. that it may give grace to those that hear it. So it's saying don't let corrupt words come out of your mouth. Sometimes when you want to say something, you need to stop and think about yeah. what it is you're saying yeah. and process it so yeah. you can think of a better way to say it. A better way to say it. Yeah. Remember I told y'all, like, instead of saying I want to lose weight, I don't want to lose nothing. So I want to say I want to gain a slender figure. Same thing, right? right? But losing weight sound negative. Losing weight sound like something that I don't want to lose, right? But if I say I want to gain a slender figure, it's still the same thing. One has a negative connotation to it. One has a positive connotation. So be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouth. We must ensure that our communication is building our life and our destiny. Many people have destroyed their life because of the words that they speak. Because they're always, you know them, y'all know them. When the phone ring, you look at it and be like, ah, I'm going to let that go to voicemail. I'm going to let that I got to be ready. You know, some people, I got to be, I got to be prayed up, pumped up, and powered up just to have a conversation. Prayed up, pumped up, and powered up. And then a lot of times when I call them, it's like, okay, I'm 10 minutes away for the call. Yeah. you call them now. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I'm on my way home, blah, blah, blah. All right, I just pulled in the driveway. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. I just can't do it. It's draining. I feel drained when I get off the phone with them. So it's just a whole lot of woe is me, woe is me. And I don't want to hear it. I really don't. And then you try to speak positive as much as you can, but it's like every single time. So let's be mindful of the words that are coming out of our mouth. In John 6 and 63, John 6 and 63, y'all read that. Ready? Read. It is the spirit who gives life. 
the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Wow. So our words is also a spirit. Woo. So our words being a spirit and building our destiny and framing our world, we need to be mindful of the words that we speak out of our mouth. There's so many scriptures about what we say. And I think sometimes we take it lightly, but it's everything. Oh, it's really, it's yeah, everything. Yeah. It's really a big deal. Yeah. So we really want to be mindful of the words that we speak out of our mouth. Ecclesiastics 8 and 4. Ecclesiastics 8 and 4. And I think I got two more scriptures. And I am done. Two more. Ecclesiastes, it says, where the word, y'all read that, read that. Where the word of a king is, there is power, and who may say to him, what are you doing? So a king, whatever a king says is yeah, the law, right? The so law. if a king says something out of his mouth, that's the law. You can't come and say nothing about it. You can't come against it. It's his decree and declare is a rule. It's the law of the land. The Bible says that we are what? Kings and priests. So if the Bible says that we are kings and priests, the words that are coming out of our mouth is weighty. The words that are coming out of our mouth carries power. The words that are coming out of our mouth is our creative ability. We get to create our world with our words. And if we are kings and priests, we need to walk in our kingdom and our priesthood. So when you think about a king and a priest, a king is our governmental legislation in the earth, right? Our priesthood is our governmental legislation in the church. So the Bible says that we are kings and priests. So that means that we are a king when we are doing spiritual matters, and we a king when we do a worldly matters. Yeah. That we are on top, in charge, and running things, no matter what capacity that we are in. Clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the way that we legislate is through the power of our words. The way that we legislate is through the power of our words. Matthew 12 and 34. Matthew 12 and 34. I got Romans and then I'm going to stop after Romans. Matthew 12 and 34. Y'all read that. Blood of How can you know? 34. 34. Matthew 12 and 30. I'm sorry, 37. Matthew 12 and 37. Matthew 12 and 37. Okay, there we go. For by your words you will justify, and by your words you will be defended. Mm. By your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So I think about that, and by our words, how do we get saved? By our words. So by our words we were justified through salvation. Yes. Through the words that we spoke out of our mouth, we received the free gift of salvation. So you're, by your words, you will be justified. That's our justification. We're saved by the words that we spoke out of our mouth. It was nothing that you had to do. You didn't have to pay a price. Well, not in this church. You didn't have to pay a price. <laughs> Go ahead. You didn't have to pay a price for it. You know? Is you're justified by your word. So we said, Lord, I believe. We said, Barb, we said it was four things that we did to get saved. We said, A, B, B, R, A, A, R, B, R. Admit, repent, believe, and receive. Yeah. Admit, repent, believe, and receive. And we say, we in the kingdom. Just that simple. A, R, B, R. Admit, repent, believe, and receive. And we say, so by our words, we are justified. By our words, we are condemned. So what are you saying to condemn yourself? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve this. Somebody else needs to be doing something better than that. I, I can't do that. I'm condemning myself because we are not condemned from Christ. Christ says your sins are as far as the east is from the west. He threw your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. So he's not condemning you. You are condemning yourself. Last verse, Romans 10, 8 through 10. Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near and in your mouth and in your heart. That the word of faith which we preach, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus 
and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So our words are very powerful. Yes, they are. Our words create our world. And if you're looking at your world and you don't Ooh, like your world, Jesus. then I suggest that you change your words. Because the more you speak those words, the more results you're going to get. So remember, words are like what? Containers. And these containers go out and get whatever you say and bring it back into your life. So don't say all men are dogs. That's right. So for my single right. ladies, if you say all men is dogs, all men is dogs, ain't none of these ninjas no good. All men is dogs. And then what's going to happen? Everybody that you run into is going to be a dog. dog. Right? So you got to speak something more powerful. I always knew that I was going to be married. I always say, I'm going to be married. I'm going to have a good husband. And he's going to be a provider. I'm going to be married, I'm going to have a good husband, and he's going to be a provider. It didn't matter all these losers that was trying to roll up on me, right? I'm going to be married, I'm going to have a good husband, and he's going to be a provider, right? So then he roll up on me, I'm checking him out, uh-uh, he go into the friend category instantly, right? He occasional dinner, he occasional movie, right? So I, I wasn't doing that, right? And then so long as I'm speaking, I'm telling the truth, I'm telling the truth. They was in categories, they was in categories, so I... It's the truth. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I was hurt. I was hurt, okay? I was a professional dater. For real, for real. A professional dater. Y'all know the story. Y'all done heard it. So then when I first got, met Apostle Greg and we was talking and stuff, and he was like, okay, um, God said you the one. I'm like, God said that. He was like, yeah, God said that um, I can have you if I want you. I was like, really? Well, if God said that, then... sex with nobody yes, and I was always honest I was always honest I remember this one guy wanted to go out to the movies and something happened with his car and then this is before um, cell phones and all that stuff came up pages was out and something happened to his car and he couldn't go so then somebody else called so I went to the movies so then he was calling me that home and I finally got home and he was like I've been calling you where you been I'm like I went to the movies I can't believe you went to the movies and your car broke down. I didn't have to suffer because your car broke down. Why should I suffer? I shouldn't suffer because you had some deficiencies with your vehicle. I want to see the movie. So with that being said, everybody don't have that heart posture. So just don't, don't try to be like Mama T if you ain't got that heart posture like Mama T. I, I, I have a certain heart posture, and I can put you in a category very easily. Very easy. So then, I, you know, I had the movie category, the church category, an occasional dinner category, entertainment on the phone. <laughs> he was just entertaining. I couldn't take him nowhere. I knew he didn't know how to act. Entertainment on the phone. <laughs> so in knowing that you can have what you say, then whatever you say, you will have. You can have what you say. So I got what I said. I said I wanted a provider that was a good man that was going to love the Lord, right? And so what I asked God for, he produced it. So I never wavered in what I wanted. So when the imitations came along, when the Ishmaels came along, yeah. it wasn't the Isaac. This is not the promise. This is a dinner. <laughs> this is not the promise. This is a movie day. This is not the promise. This is what have you. So speak those things that be not as though they were. Continue to speak what it is that you want in your life, and then you will see the physical manifestation of it. But all three got to line up. What's coming out of your mouth, got to line up with what's in your head, got to line up with what's in your heart. 
Because we can say it and we don't believe it. How many of y'all said things that you didn't believe? I've done that recently, right? I've done that recently. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I'm trying to hype myself up that I'm doing this, but I really didn't believe it in my heart. So until it lines up with your mouth and your mind and your heart, then you'll be able to see the manifestation of it. So in speaking those things that be not as though they were, sometimes that's just you prophesying to yourself. Sometimes it's getting your faith built up. It says build up your most holy faith. So when we are speaking in tongues, that's building up our most holy faith. So sometimes we got to say something and then start speaking in tongues so we can get it in our spirit from our spiritual realm. Because it says that words are spiritual. Did the scripture say that? Words are spiritual. So in knowing that God created the world with his words. And then we get to create our world with our words. So in closing, I just want y'all to repeat this because I want y'all to walk away with this. You can have what you say. You can have what you say. And whatever you say, and whatever you, say you will have. I will have. One more time. I you can have what you say. And whatever you say, you will have. For the Holy Ghost. You can have what you say. And whatever you say, you will have. Clap your hands for Jesus. Jesus, we lift up your daughter to you today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything that she poured out, Lord. There will be no backlash for any word that came out of her mouth, Lord. She will walk upright and righteous in you, Lord. So we come against anything that will try to attack the word that was poured out into the hearts of the people, Lord. Take those words and have them be containers, Lord, and bring them back to the people yeah, for what Lord. they have said, Lord. So we thank you right now, Lord. No headaches, no backaches, no neck aches, Lord. She will walk in health and wholeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So we want to all bow our heads today and close our eyes everywhere. Everybody in the sanctuary right now, this is a really special moment. So please, I really ask that you close your eyes and bow your head. The reason why is because there may be somebody in the sanctuary that heard the message that the prophet spoke. She said, if you speak it out your mouth, then you can have it. That the angels of the Lord are hearkening to his word. So if there's somebody in the sanctuary that heard something that was spoken today, and they want to get to know this Jesus, they want a relationship with him, please raise your hand. And if there's someone that stepped out of line with what God had for you and you want to get back in the right standing with him and you were in a backslidden position and you want to get back right, raise your hand if you're in the sanctuary. So we're going to all say this prayer together. If you're on Facebook, say this prayer with us. Dear Father, Dear Father I, repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. That Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And he rose again three days later. And he rose again three days later. Jesus, I ask that you come. Jesus, I ask that you come. And live in my heart forever. And live in my heart forever. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. The free gift of salvation. The free gift of salvation. Amen, amen. amen. and we'll send someone to talk to you or we'll, we'll have them contact you. And then the third call we have is if you want another free gift, which is speaking in tongues, yeah. it's the gift of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. We help you get this gift. We don't give it, but we do help you get it. And if you want that, please see our elders. They'll be in the back sanctuary. And if you're on Facebook, send us a message. And now it is offering time. It is offering time here in New Beginning Ministries, and, the, and as the team gets prepared, I'm going to give a few housekeeping. Okay, so we are going to, again, this pastoral offering. So this is the Sunday that we set aside for our senior pastor to bless her. You can bless her anytime, but today is the day that we set aside. Facebook, you have been seeing her cash app throughout the broadcast. So when you bless our pastor, she takes cash out, which you see, she also takes checks. If you make, make it out a check to her, please make it out to Adrienne Russell. That's two S's and two L's, Adrienne Russell. She also takes cash in the envelope. If you're in the sanctuary, 
There's this green envelope here. This is the envelope to bless the speaker. So please fill it out completely with your name, address, and how you're giving and how much you are giving for our record keeping, okay? So again, she takes cash app, cash, and also checks. For your tithes, offering, and gifts to the house, the, we have our cash app on the board as well. We also take checks. If you're making a check out for your tithes and offering, please make it out to New Beginning Ministries or NBM. New Beginning Ministries or NBM. We also take debit card. If you are swiping with your debit card, please let the ushers know. They will sanitize your hands. You will come up. You will drop your gifts in the basket. And you will see our elder and our minister on the stage. And they will assist you with swiping. And guess what? We also take cash. Yeah. If you are cash apping, we took the workout for you. You can flip your white envelope on the the back and there's a QR code. You put your phone up to it. You scan the code. Our cash app pops up and you just put your amount in, okay? And also, don't forget our change for change. That is our year-round uh, fundraiser for our Vacation Bible School. I'm also changing it to dollar for dollar because we got all dollars in there. So we put your bring your loose dollars, the ones you find in the dryer that you washed in your jeans. Bring them to us. We'll take them and you can drop them in the basket here, okay? So the next voice you're going to hear is our very own Deacon Sharon, and she's going to give you a principle of giving. And we do that because we want you to know what God says about giving us. Yeah. Yeah. So Deacon Sharon. Amen, amen. So I'm bringing to you today principle number 11. And I'm coming from Deuteronomy 12, 11 through 12. Then it shall come about that the place which the Lord your God will choose for his name and presence to dwell. There you shall bring everything that I'm commanding you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, and your contribution of your hand, your first gift from fruits of the ground, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God. And just expounding on that, you know, it, it expresses, you want to lay that foundation of gratitude to God. When we obey God's word for giving, there's always a reward that follow after we give our tithes, offerings, and our first fruits. Giving. Amen. Giving. 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 Mm -hmm. It's a commandment. But I had somebody challenge me, and it was so funny one time. They asked me about my tithe. And they started talking this Israelite stuff, and I started laughing. If you, <laughs> I'm still in there from Deacon Ian. It's too easy. It's too easy. Hey. So come on, y'all. Let's get up. Amen. Let's Amen. bless the Lord with what we have. I want y'all to remember it is a pastoral offering today. Yeah. All, day. All day. You on Facebook, you should see the information coming across your screens. Uh, go ahead and open your hearts to give this morning. It's a blessing. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you will follow the leading of the ushers. And Faith, if you could give us some traveling music.
thank you for it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And we say and we speak to our money and we say, money, I am a giver and a sower. Jesus is the great I am and I am the expectation of an unprecedented harvest. We have never seen anything like this before and it's all Today, Kingdom Kids is having a bake sale after 10.45 a.m. service. Friday is Mighty Men of Valor at 7 p.m. Yeah. Saturday is Food Day. Please see Pastor Denise to invest your time. Our blood drive is soon approaching, less than two weeks. Please sign up. The Red Cross can cancel our date if we don't get more people to sign up. There are flyers on the table. See Minister Delicia for more information. Next Sunday is Deliverance Sunday. Yes. Please bring your offerings for Prophet T. Kingdom Kids are going to the Ark Encounter Saturday, July 22nd, 2023. Please see Minister Laura or Sister Felicia for more information. Any first time visitors? Well, on behalf of Apostle Greg, Prophet T, and Senior Pastor Adrian, we welcome you to the beginnings where we introduce a real God to real people with real issues. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So this is the time of service that we are not having a benediction. We are preparing for 1045 service. So Facebook, you have time to come and join us either virtually or in person. Again, Pastor A will be ministering the word. Also, if you are staying here for 1045 service and you are staying in the sanctuary, the requirement is that you're praying. If you want to have outside conversation or, you know, hug people, we're going to ask you to exit out through the, the rear door here and, and stay in the red car and do that. If you are leaving and you are not returning, please again exit out of the rear door here and go out of the side door. And again, if you are staying, you are praying in the sanctuary, okay? If you are a leader and you weren't here at 7.30 to pray, please stay in here and saturate the sanctuary for those coming in through the doors, okay? So we'll see you at 10.45. <laughs> 